Have you ever wondered why the milkshake you buy at your local fast food restaurant is nice and smooth, while the stuff you make at home is an icy, crunchy, inconsistent mess? You're not wrong, most restaurants use a secret ingredient to stabilize their milkshakes. But never fear, my fellow sweet toothers, I can show you how to make a restaurant quality shake with a secret ingredient. What is it? Watch the video to find out. I ain't telling you in the intro. It's bad for watch time. Okay, to better illustrate my point, here are two milkshakes. One I bought from McDonald's and two I made a few minutes ago in the blender. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but I can see that the ice crystals here are much more evenly spread and aren't floating to the top. Well, on the homemade one, it's pretty clear that the ice crystals are floating to the top. And if I drink it, I get nothing but milk and melted ice cream. And when I do it from the top, oh yeah, I definitely noticed a temperature difference. So what the hell's going on here? Well, the short answer is buoyancy. The long answer, well, Here's a long cup I filled with crushed ice. And once I add the water, notice how all this ice floats up to the top, leaving this pool of water down here. The same thing is happening in your milkshake cup, just with much smaller ice crystals and a good chance of type two diabetes. Okay, so that's pretty fickle. So, what's the secret restaurants use? Xanthan gum. Now, you can find xanthan gum at most uh, health food stores or organic grocery stores, uh, but I'll leave a link to this in the description. Okay, so what's the science behind xanthan gum? How does it stabilize milkshakes? Well... Notice. The following segment contains oversimplified scientific language in order to appeal to a broad audience. Science experts are strongly advised not to be a nitpicking douche in the comments section. Xanthan gum is a polysaccharide. That's just fancy PhD talk for long chains of carbohydrates. As stated earlier, the ice crystals in our shake float to the top due to buoyancy. Using the long carb chains from xanthan gum thickens the liquid and basically traps the ice crystals, suspending them in place, kind of like fruit and jello, but on a much smaller scale. Okay, now that you know the science, let's actually make one. Some vanilla ice cream. Hopefully you didn't set the temperature on your freezer too low because, God, this stuff's hard as a rock. Next, let's add some milk. And yeah, uh, no tracked measurements this episode. If you want your milkshake a bit on the thick side, use more ice cream. You want a bit on the thin side, use more milk. Of course, we can't forget our chocolate syrup. And finally, let's add half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. Blend until smooth. Let's, all right, next, let's pour our milkshake into the appropriate milkshake jar. You may need a spatula the rest out, that's fine. Ah, now as you can see here, with the addition of xanthan gum, our homemade milkshakes looks more like the one I purchased from McDonald's. That means it worked. Anyway, let's continue. Let's top it off with whipped cream. Sprinkles. And for the cherry on top, a cherry. And there we go, folks, using a little kitchen chemistry, you now know how to make a restaurant quality milkshake. Oh, and uh, do me a favor, go on down and hit the like button because let me tell you right now, I am ruining my diet just for you guys. And next week's episode isn't going to be an exception. This has been Chase Cutting Kitchen. I'm CRJ, making cooking fun and meaning it this time.